What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise. That is right. Welcome back. A couple of uh, big moves in real life happened to some of our very own St. Louis Sentinels slash Washington Commanders. Of course, if you've been watching this series since episode one, we used to be the Washington Commanders prior to relocating to St. Louis. But some big moves around the NFL in real life, starting with Curtis Samuel, who just signed a three-year, $24 million deal with the Buffalo Bills worth up to $30 million. So potential Gabe Davis replacement, he signed with Jacksonville. And if Curtis Samuel plays for the Bills like he plays for us here in Sentinels franchise, that'll be a nice Nice weapon for Josh Allen, indeed. And then Sam Howell. Big, bad Sam Howell. Traded to the Seahawks, who we just dominated last episode in this franchise, 41-7. He is going to the Seahawks, traded for a third and a fifth rounder. I think there was some other picks involved there as well, but that was the main gist of it. So Sam Howell, no longer a Washington commander. And then Kendall Fuller, who was probably one of the better free agent uh, cornerbacks on the market, if not the best, he signed a two-year, $16.5 million deal with the Miami Dolphins. I wish that we had him on that type of deal because he is eating up some cap like he's Pac-Man here in Sentinels franchise, but good for those players. Lots of big moves going around. Free agency has just been crazy so far in real life. It's hard to keep up with, honestly. But those were some of our players on this franchise who got dealt in real life. And I'll tell you, another player who made some really big moves last week was our very own Dudley Saxon here, winning NFC Offensive Player of the Week, but not getting a breakout scenario. A little salty about that. We got to find a way to get Dudley up to star dev in this franchise because he is the face, you know, him and J.J. Ford, the face of the St. Louis Sentinels. But last week, he tore it up at Lumen Field in Seattle, 24 carries, a buck 34 on the ground, averaged over five and a half yards on the ground, and had three rushing touchdowns as well. So Dudley continues to impress, and I just feel like star, superstar development has to be on the horizon for Dudley. Two things that need to get done today. We got to lock in Jamin Davis. He needs to be our left linebacker of the future we don't have too much depth at the linebacker position he is still young star dev a lot of upside so we got to bring him back and then we got to make a decision on brian robinson i tried to re-sign him last episode he turned me down and the more i'm thinking about it and talking about dudley we may just pull the trigger on brian today not sure let's square up jamin first so jamin is looking for a pretty hefty contract three years 35.7 million dollars he does not have any interest in being here mainly because we're not a big market but i mean jamin dang help us win a super bowl and maybe we can be a big market so we're gonna have to overpay a little bit i would be comfortable going up to say 39 million three years 39 million can we lock in our right left outside linebacker out of kentucky we do so jamin is back thank you and I look forward to seeing what you could do for us on the defensive side of the football. Yeah, Brian only wanted two years, 10 mil. I tried to offer him three years, 16 and a half. And you know what? I just I just talked myself into it. I'm going to at least see the trade deadline is next week, week eight. So I'm going to at least see what type of value Brian Robinson has. I mean, to me, it makes sense. Like I said, Dudley is the future. There's no doubt about that. He is RB number one for us. And we got a hidden development power back, which Brian Robinson is a power back. We got a hidden development power back, Dwight Jackson, who is not that much lower than uh, Brian Robinson. And, I mean, you know, 11 overall points lower, whatever. But he's at least star dev or better. And we won't be able to trade just Brian Robinson because we still are kind of in cat purgatory. So... Another player, potentially, whose contract is expiring, and I just don't think we need him. You know, he's getting a little bit older, is Cody Barton. Now, if we trade Brian and Cody Barton, doesn't look like any teams really have interest in them. I guess the Browns have a little bit of interest in Barton. But let's just generate offers, see uh, what we got. Lots of future 2027 picks, but... The Giants are offering Tony Knight, who is basically, he basically is Cody Barton, just younger. Let's let, let's see what this Tony Knight guy is all about. 
74 overall, 6 foot, 239 pounds. So another power back, it looks like. Only 22? I mean, he's only 4 overall less than uh, Cody Barton. 87 speed, 83 hit power. Not very good at block shedding, but decent in zone coverage, at least. There could be something here. All right, so trade alert. I pulled the trigger. Brian Robinson and Cody Barton going to the New York Giants as well as a fifth round pick next year. Not this upcoming draft, but the following draft and then a fourth and a seventh from 2028. And we acquire basically a younger version of Cody Barton in middle linebacker out of UCLA, two-year pro Tony Knight. And then uh, just a throw in right tackle Hamilton. And the main thing, the main takeaway from this trade we recoup some of our draft capital for this upcoming draft because we basically got nothing. This third round pick is probably going to be our highest. And that will, to me, that makes sense. Like, I don't see the point in keeping Brian Robinson because we have basically a younger version of Brian Robinson as it is. And then we got Dudley Saxon. Now, we are only down to a two-man running back room, so we're going to have to watch there. But Tony Knight is going to slide up to the starting middle linebacker position and i don't really think that we really lost too much and we gained a little bit of draft capital back denver broncos three and three so a beatable team we're on a nice little streak here playing really good start this season and the broncos look terrible at everything and they still got russ here who's a pittsburgh Steeler now and javante williams so uh we're gonna start out defend the short pass i feel like that's where russ would probably be most prominent, and I would imagine they have uh, PS2 in town, so they do. So we're going to do, we'll do run inside, continue to ride that uh, Dudley Saxon wave. They seem to be pretty good against the pass as it is. And if we win this game, guys, we're five and two best start so far of the franchise. And we will also have a pretty sizable edge over the Dallas Cowboys as well. Three and three Broncos at the four and two Sentinels. Chance for us to really make our mark in the NFC East. And if you guys are fired up for more St. Louis Sentinels content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And remember, Jersey giveaway at 1,000 subscribers. Help me get there. Only takes you a half a second to click that button and you will get good quality content multiple times a week. So without further ado, guys, let's head down to St. Louis Sentinel Stadium and get ready for the game. Jason Meyer is going to kick this ball off. So that means the Sentinels will get the pigskin first. This Broncos team not very good i was looking through them pre-game and a lot of injuries on this team a lot of veterans injured so we're gonna see a lot of one two-year auto-generated guys here that means nothing when you're playing a team like us but here is potential mvp candidate i couldn't see how he couldn't be jj ford just playing at an all-time high level i think next episode we'll probably go through some of the stats on our team and just see how some of these players are doing but J.J. and Dudley and McLaurin and maybe Samuel, they got to be amongst the top in the ranks, you would think. And there's George Williams, number 18, our big target, picking up a nice gain of eight to start this thing out. Now, I made the run or the focus run inside. And can Dudley continue this great streak that he's been on as of late? Uh, he may be up there, too, amongst the top rushers in the NFL. Not 100% sure. But there's some nice blocking from Dudley. Got to make sure he doesn't get injured, though, because now we are down a running back. Ford coming out single back here, a little bunch formation. Going to be probably looking for uh, McLaurin as our primary target. And Baron Browning and one of his best buds. The pressure was back there instantly, which not really sure how, because this uh, Broncos defensive line and, like I said, team in general is really, really not that good. So I'm going to need our pretty good offensive line to step up here and protect my man Ford. Let's give it to Dudley on the screen. Dudley looking for blockers. Ricky Stromberg wasn't able to get out there quick enough, it would seem. And a third and long is going to ensue here to start this one off. We're going to come out of gun here. Third and nine, definitely not uh, manageable by any stretch of the imagination, but still doable, I think. So let's try to play good and pick this one up shall we and i right idea there i needed to let curtis samuel's route develop a little bit longer and i think he probably could have had the the uh outside there 
But a three and out, well, not a three and out, but a punt. And there's that stupid Ooh. kicking thing, man, that I get every now and again that I absolutely hate. Let that ball roll. Okay, Justin Hayward, go ahead and pick it up. But, like, that kicking arc on the punts and the kicks, sometimes it, like, breaks off there and makes your kicks super short. And I hate it. But, Russ, uh, wow. Okay, three touchdowns and eight picks. Now I see why the Broncos are not that good. Of course, Russ, in real life, now a Pittsburgh Steeler. And Kenny Pickett is not. Interesting development that just happened today as I record this. Kenny Pickett is not a Pittsburgh Steeler. He is now a Philadelphia Eagle. But John Allen still a Sentinel as he got that big bag a couple ep episodes ago. Getting in there to make the stop. And actually, Javante Williams is injured. So Jeremy Tompkins, the two-year auto-generated guy out of Lafayette. As I mentioned, lots of injuries here. And that's a, that's a nice outside run there. Nice outside run there by Tompkins, getting the edge. A lot of injuries on this Broncos team, so we're going to see a lot of fake players, a lot of auto-generated guys. Going to try to use the old Medulla Oblongata to remember them all. And hopefully not having Javante Williams is a plus. But Tompkins, a couple good runs to start this one out. Maybe J no Javante Williams, no problem, as he backflips on the ground. A little press man coverage here with our corners. Another guy, Capers, another auto-generated guy in the backfield as well. And he was looking for Ian Thomas, the tight end. But it was good coverage there and by Justin Hayward. And that is going to bring up a second and 10. So let's go ahead and show a little blitz here on Russ. I don't like... That's a right side there. That could spell disaster. And I don't know what the heck Russ was targeting. Looking like he might get 10 picks in this one with the way he threw that ball. Play good, solid zone coverage here and force possibly a long field goal. Russ is coming out empty, so we'll see what he's going to go ahead and do. And he's just going to check it down to Thomas, but it's going to be well short of the line to gain. And that should bring out Jason Myers, the kicker. Not a gimme field goal by any stretch of the imagination, but he should be able to boot this one through. But I'll tell you what, our defense has been playing pretty good as of late. We know the struggles that the Sentinels defense has had in the past. The worst team in consecutive uh, seasons, number 32 in the league in total defense, playing a bit better in this season. Got to make sure, you know, look, Sentinels are the type of team now where games that we are supposed to win and should win, I want to see blowouts like last week against the Seattle Seahawks. That was a dominating, dominating performance. So maybe Dudley on the inside. Nice juke there. Nice juke there indeed. Faking out the defender. It's going to bring up third and four. Got to pick this one up here. I'm going to have Dudley Saxon block for me. A little mesh spot. Seems like a good thing to call in this situation. And Bart Burns. And that was just really good coverage. Wow. Okay. That was really good coverage there by Damari Mathis. Back-to-back -back drives. The Sentinels are unable to... To move the ball so after a dominating performance on offense last week boys are coming out of the locker room a bit stale in this one and we got to pick up the pace because again broncos team is the team that we should beat and i don't want to see anything less then a little bit of pressure at russ russ here see how he responds to that Ooh, nice play fake thought that was actually going to be a run and russ now starting out too accurate one of four for three yards we saw that uh just phenomenal touchdown interception ratio pregame three to eight and i'm hoping not to uh to run those i'm hoping to run those numbers up but in favor of the interceptions don't want to see him make that ratio any better and i'll tell you what i'll tell you what this man james smith williams of all people james smith williams the five-year pro six-year pro whatever he is in this franchise out of nc state he has been playing very good he may actually be our uh, leader in sacks, if you could believe that. Not Chase Young, not John Allen. Oh, no. James freaking Smith Williams. Where's, where's Russ going to go? Check down. Jamin Davis, who just got that contract extension, there to break it up. And both offenses looking pretty sus in this one to start. So, again, going to have Dudley Block. Going to go through my progressions here. Curtis Samuel just going to do a safe little check down on the drag route. And Curtis gets injured. Surprise to freaking prize. We have been no strangers to injury this season. And our second best, maybe even close to uh, tied for first best. I don't know. Him and McLaurin, it's a shootout between those two. 
he's going to go down. So now George Williams and Jahan Dotson will get a lot more action. Ford trying to thread the needle, and lucky that one wasn't picked there. That was very close from JL Skinner, the safety. All right, you know what time it is. Gun verticals out of the trips formation. We always look to usually hit McLaurin on this one, and my God, is JJ Ford ever inaccurate in this one. So is Russ, but... This is a uh, screwy type of game here. I'm not liking what's going on. Luckily, our defense is playing good, but our offense is performing like straight crap, and that should have been running into the fair catch interference. Luckily, it wasn't. See the Arizona Cardinals down there, 5-1. and one. Wow. I'm going to go ahead and show Blitz uh, is going to be a pass, and wide open there is Ian Thomas, the tight end. It was a nice stick route from him. Kendall Fuller was there to get him. But not before the uh, line to gain was achieved. Broncos got Jerry Judy in this franchise and pretty pumped for the Jerry Judy move. He is, of course, going to Cleveland. Play alongside another Alabama Crimson Tide member, Amari Cooper. I think that was a good signing by the Browns, man. Jerry Judy, you know, hasn't had the best career up until this point. But he also hasn't been placed in the best situation in Denver, so I think that uh, that was a really good signing, really smart signing by Cleveland indeed. It's going to be another run there to Tompkins, and we were there to sniff that out, James Smith-Williams. That could be the last play before the end of the first. If Russ snaps this, he actually will. Okay, very interesting. He did not have to, and that is going to be a catch and a completion there by Cassidy Huff, auto-generated tight end, two-year man out of wherever he's out of. I don't even remember. A lot of, lot of auto-generated fake guys here to keep track of. So, anyways, that's the end of the first uh, snooze fest. Snooze fest, I will say, from both squads. And this is a chance for the Sentinels to, again, dodge a bullet, I would say, and hopefully hold these Broncos to a field goal. Not going to happen because Ian Thomas, looking like a prime tight end option, Makes the catch, and the Broncos got the ball down to the 12. Come on, John Allen. I need you to uh, pay off that big, big contract that we just got you. There's some pressure. There's some pressure. Can we get to Russ? Okay. Again, not going to show up on the stat sheet. The sack did not get home, but we had a couple Sentinels back there, Jonathan Allen included, and uh, we forced Russ to throw that one away. So I will certainly take it and got to watch run. In this situation as well, which it is actually going to be a pitch play. And Kendall Fuller, why did he Why did he do that? Why did he do that? I'll show you guys what, what bad, bad Kendall did. He had a perfect, perfect lane to make the tackle. Where's Kendall? Kendall's right here, okay? Look how boneheaded this is. Beeline to the running back. And what's Kendall do? What the fuck is this? He stops. All you got to do is keep running, my man. He stops and cuts and gives Floyd Capers just that extra second to get that little burst of speed. The Broncos are going to go up 10-0. I got to get my head out of my you-know-what and get these Sentinels playing right. See if we can quell this pass rush a little bit here. Going to be play action. Boot rollout. McLaurin's open. Hit him. There we go. Terry, can you juke Justin Simmons in PS2? That's a tall task. Easily the Broncos' two best players, probably not even just on defense, two best players in general. Uh, but that's the first really positive play that we've seen. And oh, my God, uh, not a single soul is on Jahan Dotson. So it's going to be a quick, I mean, yeah, I'll take that all day, every day. There was not a singular soul lined up on Jahan Dotson. And you know what? You know what? Coach is saying TE attack. And I think that, uh, yeah, I think it's time to do that. We know this play can be pretty fruitful at times, but there's a lot of people over there on the left side. So I don't necessarily like it, but... Gonna be Justin Simmons on the pick. All I needed to do was throw a touch pass. But for some reason, unbeknownst to me, I mean, all I needed to do was throw a touch pass. Like... Yeah, Justin Simmons is there, but Bart Burns has about seven yards of separation. And if we just touch pass it over Justin Simmons' head, that's six. 
but for some reason, I can never throw a freaking touch pass in this game. Oh, sweet sister Francis. This game is not playing out uh, how I would have liked it to. That much is for sure. Russ coming out with a fullback. Not going to be a run, though. Interesting. He is still going to find Jerry Judy. And the Broncos are starting to cook here. And we also did get the ball first to start. These two one-year, two-year pros, Jeremy Tompkins and Floyd Capers, Really doing a good job playing in, you know, the the, uh, the absence of Javante Williams. Actually, all these, really, everybody's playing good. Russ wasn't, but he is now. And there is going to be Tompkins on the outside run picking up four. He's at five for 46 already. All right, we're going more pressure here. If it's a run, it's a run. And I have Hayward right there. Oh, well, look at the vicious cut and the break tackle. Who is, he's breaking every tackle. Who is Jeremy Tompkins, man? <laughs> Look, I'm not even going to go to replay because this is going to piss me off. We had a chance to get him in the backfield. He cuts. He breaks tackles. I am so confused right now. I don't know what's going on. Come on. Get Russ. Get Russ. Okay. One thing positive. The pressure has been there. It hasn't only got to Russ one time. But the pressure has been there. This team is not. Maybe it's because I said. They, it's got to be what it is, right? It's got to be because I said they weren't good. This Broncos team. Not very good. I was looking through them pre-game. And Madden heard me. And Madden is always listening, so you can never, never talk crap to the game. Because Madden will hear you, and Madden will make you pay. Play fake. Where's Russ going to go? Where's Russ going to go? Okay. Hold him to a field goal. They're going to go up 13-0, but we got to, got to score, not a field goal, a touchdown on this next drive. And Justin Simmons and Pat Sertan got their X-Factors on. That friggin' sucks. We just, oh, what is going on? Dudley almost caught that. This game is not going well for us. And now I got to do it. Didn't even, I didn't, but you know what? I should be able to call PA Cross single back X-Bunch nasty twice in this game. Because I didn't call it at all against the Seahawks. Not gonna, of course. But Curtis Samuel, okay, he must be okay. He's back from injury. Can you, oh, look at the vicious juke from Samuel. Wow. Okay, our second round pick, Jerry's Powell, goes down. That sucks. But what a vicious, vicious juke. The PA single back X bunch nasty is a broken play, in my opinion, yes. Which is why you guys know. I don't even have to say it. I only call it once per game, but that Curtis Samuel got that ball and did the rest all by himself. Let's go outside to Dudley. Can we get any type of blocking? Not really. And Dudley is not having the same type of game he had last week. Look, coach called TE attack again, but I see Justin Simmons in that same area of the field that he was in last time. I'm going to try the same thing. Don't know if it's going to be the right call. Okay, this time we have to have Bart. Thank you. Oh, my God. That might have been the longest it's ever taken me to score points in Sentinels franchise. Almost two quarters. We got a little bit of wind to the right, too. So nothing is going to be a gimme here in Sentinel Field. That is good. But look, we're right back in this thing now. If our defense, which has been playing good, can hold the Broncos off the scoreboard here, we get the ball back, score a touchdown. We are right back on top. So even though our offense hasn't been clicking, neither has the Broncos other than that one drive, and our defense has been playing pretty good, so just got to keep it up. Tompkins averaging nearly 10 yards per carry, so we're probably going to switch our focus at halftime, I would have to imagine. I mean, we that, that can't happen. We can't allow this guy Tompkins to average that many yards per carry, and I mean, that's the second time he's gotten a huge run off the edge, and he's over 10 yards now. Almost at the century mark. All right, come on, Sentinels. I believe in you. Two-minute warning is looming here. And uh, there is the other full ugh, running back capers. And I swear, man, how are we getting how are we getting torn up by two two-year auto-generated running backs? I mean, and, and our run defense has been stout as of late, but it's it's the outside run. It is the outside run. So I think that that is gonna be the focus after halftime, but I cannot believe that we allowed them to score three plays, 75 yards. And it was two big runs by Jeremy Tompkins and Floyd Capers. Uh, draft picks from the 20, what would it be, 2025 20, season. And they're, they're just killing us. Got to put some points on the board here, guys. This game is still within our reach. 
and Ford, man. Were you were you out partying last night, brother? Were you uh tipping a you know tipping a few back, sucking back on Grandpa's old cough medicine? Were you? Because you're looking a little rough in this one. You're you're not looking like your normal MVP caliber self. And Dudley is not either. And we can't even get a good block from Damian Lewis. And if we punt the ball back to the Broncos here, man, this could spell trouble. Man, we got to pick this up. No doubt about it. Cannot punt the ball back to Denver. So let's just do that. Can I P.I.? Oh, my God. Curtis Samuel caught it. But that was looked to me like a little case of P.I. there. Not going to matter because we still do pick it up. Ford uh, sub 50% completion on the day. I think we go back to screen with Dudley. Coach is calling it, and we just can't seem to, although. Hold on. Hold on. I'm doing something. I'm doing something. No one said it was a good idea, but Terry's getting pressed, hot and heavy, and if Justin Simmons comes down, which he is going to. Terry, can you catch it, Terry? JJ Ford is freaking drunk. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with my man. This is I've never seen Ford play like this. Never seen Ford play like this. Oh, wide open is McLaurin. Nobody was on him. I went through about four progressions on that one. Was looking for Curtis Samuel initially. He never got open. And I seen Terry just sitting there all by his lonesome, just kicking back, having a smoothie. Is that a thing? I don't know. I know Dudley Saxon's screen is a thing. And Dudley, can we get some blocks, please? Oh, vicious juke from the Saxonator. I'm going to go ahead and call a timeout here, but this is a good drive. Faced a lot of adversity on it. Has not been easy, but we are moving the ball downfield, and we got two timeouts here. Don't think we necessarily have to go through the air, but I just feel like I feel like we do. That is what I feel like we have to do. So let's go play action, see if we can catch him napping a little bit. Curtis on the zig route. Get out of bounds, please. Thank you. May just have to be like an end zone shot and field goal situation. I don't really want that to be the case, but, you know, I just, I don't really know. Uh, I just don't have a really warm, fuzzy feeling about this one. Let's just say that Dudley blocking seems like a smart idea. So we are going to do that. Got to watch this pass rush. Uh, that's a pick. That's a pick. Wow. Second of the afternoon from Justin Simmons. He's a problem. He's a problem. And Sentinels, uh, <laughs> it's not looking too bright for the boys because that was our chance to put up points. And I, not even going to say we, a lot of times these picks are not on me, and I'll say that. But if they are on me, I definitely call them. And that one was uh, definitely on me for sure. And nobody wants to guard Jerry Judy, so the Broncos may just get a field goal out of this one too. And I'm, I don't really know what's going on with the Sentinels, or maybe it's just me. Although, I have another series, the SFL, and I just played a game a couple days ago on that and dominated too. So, but you know, dominated in the last game of Sentinels franchise, dominated in the last game of the SFL, but just something about this game, it's those freaking running backs, auto-generated guys, that's what it is. Not our best half of football. I mean, the passing yardage looks okay, but it's the rushing yard that, that's really what's getting us, and I think that we are going to... We're going to change our focus to run outside because the run inside is not working. And we are going to defend the outside run because these freaking made up imaginary running backs that don't even exist in real life. Jeremy Tompkins and Floyd Capers, they've been absolutely tearing us up. And we cannot keep putting the pressure on our defense because eventually they're going to start to get worn out. And eventually the Broncos are going to put up more points. Crowd is mighty quiet here in Sentinels Field. And uh, can't say I blame them. We haven't given them too much to cheer about. That's part of the problem right there. And you see, you know, Madden, you, I see what you're doing. I go run outside as my focus. And what do you do? Yeah, you run the ball inside. Yeah, touche there. Um, but yeah, I mean, some games you got it, some games you don't, and we just don't seem to have it in this one, but uh, I was about to say, we almost stopped Tompkins there. He pushes the tackler forward and picks up the first down. All right, we got to, got to find a way to get to Russ, because he's just way too comfortable. We almost did, and oh my God, are you kidding me? Diving catch by rookie James Burrell, the Broncos' second round pick out of LSU. We had, we got exactly what we wanted there. We had the freaking pressure, and it was just a, 
a diving acrobatic catch. That's literally how this game has been going so far. Um, and it's just, it's not good. There's Jonathan Allen finally making a presence. All right, Sentinels, I believe in you. I believe in you, please. Oh, okay, there we go. This is actually going to be a punt because there is no way they're in Jason Myers' field goal range. And okay, so that is exactly what we needed. It got a little dicey there for a minute. Not going to say I had that warm, fuzzy feeling from the start, but that is exactly what we needed. Going to be a touchback. The Sentinels are going to get the ball from the 20. And we just got to, got to, got to score. And I got to stop chucking picks with J.J. Ford, messing his stats up, making them look all bad. I know I didn't go through the Broncos roster or whatever, trying to keep the video time down a little bit. But there, it's it, look, spoiler alert, it's not good. It's not good, except for Justin Simmons and Patrick Zertan. That is, like, literally the only, only good parts of the roster. And we are going to be sacked by Zach Allen. And I just cannot figure out the Broncos in this one, guys. Third and 21. It's not looking good, but maybe McLaurin can change that, and he does. And fourth and two, we have to go for it. We have to go for it, no doubt about it. We are not punting this. And I realize I'm going to go away from uh, coach suggestions here, but it's got to be screen pass. It's got to be screen pass to Dudley on, I think, kind of the left side. Got to got to pick this up. There is no way we could punt the ball back to the Broncos. It's not happening. So just give me a tiny little bit of protection and let Dudley pick this up. Dudley, I need you to get it. He's going to be short. Oh, my God. He's going to be short. Am incredible. Amazing. He was just like a half of an ant's pubic hair away from picking that up. I can't even believe it. I cannot believe that this is happening right now the broncos there's no way there's no way they are doing this to the sentinels but they are they are dudley when did he get injured no not allowed to happen saxon not allowed to happen at all russ uh moving some guys around we're gonna do the same and it's gonna be a design run to russ are you kidding me kendall fuller gets him in the backfield and another chance to uh force a punt here Another chance to force a punt here. We're guessing pass. We're shading inside. And we're just going to hopefully play good defense and force another punt by the Broncos. Can we do that? Can we do that? Dante Fowler is going to get Russ, and he fumbled it. Yes, and Tony Hoover, the vacuum cleaner, sucked that ball up. Been waiting to say that one. Oh, man, dude. Look, if we lose this game, there is no excuse. There's no excuse because we're getting all the chances in the world. All of them. We're getting all the chances in the world. So there is not a singular excuse if we lose this game. There, there's just no way. It's going to be RPO to George Williams. George, I need you to truck somebody. Kind of did. I guess I'll take it. He just got to score a touchdown. We haven't seen the end zone in so long. I forgot what it looked like. Ford, you're slow. And s What is happening in this game? This is a Murphy's Law game. What can go wrong is going wrong. And I mean, tell me how we're not in four down territory like all, forever <laughs> for the rest of this game. We got to be. Let's uh, lock in. Hopefully pick this one up here. Curtis, I need you to get the first down. Is he going to be short? No. They give it to him. Thank God. And Dudley's not going to come back either. So Dwight Jackson, this is, look, we just uh, released our running back number two who would be a running back number one on most teams. This is your chance to show us that we made the right decision. Dwight, okay, nice little speed burst there. Can you juke uh, Justin Simmons? No. But a gain of 16 from Dwight easily, his best rusher as an NFL halfback. Give it to Dwight again, see what he's got. Can I get a, oh, nice block there from our fullback. Okay. Dwight coming in, providing a little bit of a spark. I like to see it, because Dudley uh, certainly <laughs> wasn't getting it done. We're going to go TE attack. Uh, it says worked once and also not worked another time. But the coach is calling it, so I am going to go with it. Going to try to hopefully roll out to the left possibly. And nope. But Dwight Jackson in the passing game. Look at Dwight, the rookie out of UAB, coming in and providing a spark for the Sentinels. Don't look now, guys, but we got the ball on the 10-yard line. Let's go PA rollout again. Logan Thomas is open. There we go. 
Oh man, I'm gonna have to up my blood my blood pressure medication and possibly get on high cholesterol medication and possibly get on diabetic medication or whatever. Stress, anxiety, depression. I'm gonna need to go see my doctor and get on every type of medication that is on the big pharma market after this game. Cause this game is stressful. And somehow it's back to a one score game. And this should make for a fun fourth quarter because somehow it's a ball game again. Don't know how. They're killing 193 rushing yards for the Broncos compared to our 51. And on the day that we trade away Brian Robinson, Dudley Saxton gets injured and leaves the game and doesn't come back. So right now we're just hoping that it's not, you know, some uh, crazy injury that has him sidelined for a while. And there is Tompkins again. Made it a little interesting there, and it's going to be a big third and two coming up now. This is probably a run. I'm going to play this thing as if it is a run. I should have just probably ran commit, but every time you do that, it's it usually, yep, see what, see what would have happened there if I would have done that. First down for Ian Thomas, and we could not. Second straight time, we couldn't get the Broncos off the field. Ball's on the 39 here. Can the Sentinels pull out a rabbit out of their hat here and pull a magic trick? Oh, Justin Hayward. Good thing he did that because I was, I'm was i not really sure where I was going with that whole rabbit out of the hat thing. So Jamin Davis or Justin Hayward forced me to stop that monologue, which I'm actually pretty grateful about because uh, it wasn't going too well for me. But it was a nice play from Hayward. And oh, and speaking of nice plays, Jonathan Allen with the vicious, vicious hit on Tompkins. And it's going to make it third and three here. So question, do we, we're going to play man coverage. Might not be the smartest thing to do, but guess what? We're going to do it anyways, and that may I may regret this. I, I'm going to regret this. Yep. Should have played zone. Should have played zone. That was our chance to get him off the field, guys, and we may have just squandered it, unfortunately. Still about eight minutes left, but father time is not our friend right now, and we really, really needed to get the Broncos off of the field on this one, and that is going to be a nice run there by Floyd Capers. And I would say this is a must-stop scenario. This is a must-stop scenario indeed. And I'm going to send pressure. Part of me wants to run commit, but I'm not going to do it just in case. Um, okay. Oh, Glenn May couldn't wrap him up. We are going to force a field goal unless the Broncos decide to go for it, which I wouldn't be surprised if they do. They're not. So that's good. We got to also watch the fake as well. A blocked kick from Benjamin St. Juice would be nice. We're not going to get it. And Jason Myers is going to make this a nine-point game. So we got to score quick, definitely. Even going for two, not going to be enough. So we got to score quick and still stop the Broncos. JJ does have his dots X-Factor on, so that is good. All passes will be accurate. And thank God that one was accurate because that was dangerous. Four close to 300 now, nothing new for him. He does that uh, week in and week out for a living. And I don't think that we can really go run anymore. This is an all-pass situation, I feel like, for the rest of the game. Because we have got to move quick. And, oh, my God, that could have been a sack. Should have been a sack. Jahan Dotson going to catch it, get out of bounds. And we are moving pretty quick. McLaurin going to have him streak. This is a mesh concept. But we're going to try, Terry. Good decision. That was a good decision by me. Ford goes over 300 now. We are moving this ball uh, relatively quick. Coach is saying TE attack again. Why the frick not? It's He's been calling it all game. I know the coach calls it a lot, um, but it's a good thing to call in this situation, I feel like, because we got to score quick. And if we can just roll out to the left and maybe hit Bart Burns. Can we hit him? We do. Bart, truck somebody. Get in. He does. Okay. I don't like to call that play, you know, all the time. But if the coach is going to call it for me, it's a coach suggestion. I mean, why not? And that was about as quick as we could have possibly scored. Now, the thing is, we're going to have to stop the Broncos because a uh, touchdown, I would say, a field goal is fine. Touchdown effectively ends this. Maybe should have went for two on that one uh, in hindsight. But if we can just get him off the field and play good defense, the ball will be in our court field, I guess. Gridiron. 
and we would have a chance to go down and score on a game-winning drive. Gonna go press man here. Russ uh, thought he might entertain the run. Give me a pick, Hayward. That was you. Oh, my God. That could have been a house call, too. Again, probably gonna go zone coverage for the rest of this one, I would presume. And you want to check it down to the running back? I'm fine with it, but that was a nice pickup of four. And can we get him off the field here and have a chance to win this thing? That is the question. Zone coverage, again, got to trust it. Got to assume that we can uh, make it happen. Probably drop Chase Young out here in coverage as well. Russ, okay, get to him. Get to him. We do. We do. Quan Martin It's going to stop Jeremy Tompkins short. And the Broncos are going to punt the ball back to us with uh, going to be just a little over three minutes. And all we got to do is drive down and score a field goal and just not obviously turn the ball over or do something dumb. And this could be an epic comeback. A core in over 100 yards, too. You love to see it. Start here. Draw play to Dwight Jackson. Show me some good blockers. I will take it. I will take it. Dwight, I got to say, I'm liking him. I'm liking him. I hope that Dudley isn't gone for too long, but I'm liking Dwight Jackson as the second option. Yeah, coach is saying draw. Um, I agree with it. Right now, we need about 15 yards, and I would feel extra confident because they're probably going to ice me. I'm not the best at ice kicks. Um, okay, and that is a good start again, and that should be a face mask, I think. Shouldn't be holding, right? Right? Yes. Now we are in the driver's seat, my friends. Damari Mathis, thank you. And now we just got to force the Broncos to burn all of their timeouts. So, yes, we're definitely going to keep this thing on the ground. If we <laughs> come back and pull this off, man, look, it's not going to be pretty. But you know what? A win is a win. And good teams, playoff teams, they find a way to win. And, oh, my God, nobody wanted to... Block the linebacker there. Uh, that makes our job a little bit harder. Maybe should be going past, but I want Denver to burn these timeouts. They probably wouldn't ice me either. Okay, that's a nice run from Jackson too. Andrew Billings going to go ahead and get injured. This may be screen pass territory. I mean, over a minute, that's still a lot of time, and it's Madden. So teams always like to go down. And score quickly. So let's just try. Oh, heavy pressure instantly. Uh, to break up two. So that stops the clock. That is not how I wanted that drive to end. I mean, we got to kick the field goal here. Yes, of course. But the Broncos still have two timeouts. I do not like that at all. And all they, all they got to do is get into field goal range. I really wanted to kill that clock, man. I mean, we take the lead for the first time today, which is great. But we're going to need our defense, somebody, whether it's Kendall Fuller, Quan Martin, John Allen, Justin Hayward, anybody. Tony Knight, who we just brought in with the trade. Tony Hoover, our number one overall pick, who hasn't done diddly squat this year. We're going to need somebody to step up and make a play. Again, zone coverage, probably. Uh, thought about going pressure there for a moment. Tony Hoover there to make the stop, but uh, he does get out of bounds. Can't play conservative, because again, all they need to do is get in the field goal range, and that is not difficult to do in the NFL, or especially Madden for that matter. It's not hard to do at all. And I mean, really, they're, they're pretty close to being in field goal range already, just like that. And if they get into field goal range, I'm confident that they will probably drill it. Although, there's a nice stop from, I believe that was Jamin Davis. Broncos call timeout. All right, we're going dime blitz here, guys. Dime blitz. I just feel like it's the right call. Probably Russ. Oh, man. See if they go hurry up. Did he get out of bounds? He must have got out of bounds. Ian Thomas has been a, a problem today. That much is for sure. Um, I guess zone coverage again, you know, uh, sh maybe should entertain the idea of going pressure, but I'm not gonna just hopefully we play good defense and that's probably going to be ball game. Unfortunately, it would be, we got to go pressure now. We just got to hope for, uh, for something crazy sack on Russ, something like that. We got to hope for it. Not going to get it. Oh, fumble force a fumble. It's game. Broncos going to kick the walk off field goal. 
because our defense, they played so good all game long. Unless we get a blocked kick here, which I guess is possible. Our defense played so good all game long and just going to fall a little bit short, unfortunately. I mean, unless we get a freaking PI call, something like that. I'm going to go Hail Mary and try to draw a PI call. But let's be honest, the chances of that happening, slim to none. Yep, just going to go Hail Mary and try to draw a uh, good old PI call or something like that. I mean, I've seen stranger things happen. It definitely can happen. Show me. Oh, my God. McLaurin caught it on the bobble. Wow. Terry caught it on the bobble. But it's not going to matter. We needed the PI call. 26-24, we dropped to the Broncos. That one is a heartbreaker. I can't believe Terry caught that, man. I can't believe he... I can't even go to replay to show it again. So because of that, like, 80-yard bomb, Ford goes 4-14 through the air. Uh, Russ never got a touchdown, but he never had to because the combination of Jeremy Tompkins, 99 yards, and Floyd Capers, 95 yards. I wish that Javante Williams would have been here. And then receiving, I mean, McLaurin and Samuel balled out in this one. Uh, I think Bart Burns had our two touchdowns, right? Yes, he did. But those two picks by me, both to Justin Simmons, very unfortunate. Broncos had a high number of sacks. We had one, uh, three, actually. Fowler, Fuller, and James Smith-Williams. And that sucks, but... We should still be number one in the NFC East, if nothing else, tied with the Cowboys. So it's not like, you know, we still control our own destiny. But that was one where you just feel like you got to win it because you're playing an inferior team. And we unfortunately did not play our best. And oh, look, we got to play the Kansas City Chiefs next. So maybe we will be a four and four. Doesn't look like Dudley got injured, so that is good. But I, he has been leaving the games a lot. We only have Andrew Wiley injured, so nothing... Too crazy, and luckily, and I'll tell you what, one good takeaway, Dwight Jackson did look good. So it looks like we have our number one and number two running back, at least initial observations. So we dropped to four and three, Cowboys three and three. So depending on what they do in the next game, we should or may or should still have the number one seed in the NFC East. So heartbreaker there, but it was a fun game, and hopefully it kept you guys on the edge of your seats till the end. So that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.